Hello, my name is Zapson. Um, yesterday I did a video on the Sea Skin dry suit and uh, going with that trend, I'm going to not quite review but uh, show off a couple Chinese dive lights that I have that have really worked for me and I think for many divers, maybe not all divers, but many divers would work out very well for them. Um, so one of the things that many people initially think or hear when they hear, oh, Chinese, dry, uh, Chinese uh, dive light, they often think, oh my gosh, why would you take a Chinese dive light into a cave or a cavern or whatnot? And for context, I take a lot of Chinese dive lights into caves. And there's a, there tends to be a big stigma about using Chinese dive lights and just to really dispel that to an extent, to an extent, um, to really dispel that, most actual manufacturers, major manufacturers out there, manufacture their dive lights in China. They might have slightly better design in minor subtle ways, but in the year 2021, the difference between an LED of this brand and an LED of that brand, the LEDs aren't necessarily the, uh, the LEDs themselves aren't going to fail very uh, much differently. They're all going to be, for the most part, manufactured about the same. Um, so what it really comes down to is price point. And a lot of um, actual branded lights tend to have a literal, I'm not making this up, 400 or 800 or 1200 um, percent markup between China and slapping a brand on it. So I'm going to show you um, a couple different lights I have and tell you about each one. So this is a, forget the Goodman handle and all the goodies attached to it, but this single light right here is probably my favorite light to date. I use this as a primary light for caving. Um, guess how much it costs? 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Um, 30 something bucks. It supposedly 6,000 lumens, never trust that from a Chinese website, but it's bright enough. It is absolutely comparable to a um, one of my buddy's um, canister lights that it would be definitely more standard or more, more uh, well accepted in the caving community. So $30 light, about as bright. Obviously it's not a canister light, but um, this guy stores Four 18650s. So if you're not super familiar, 18650s are pretty much the standard lithium ion battery used in dive lights. Don't get anything that doesn't use an 18650. I would not suggest it. Um, but this guy, three something seals, supposedly good to 85 meters, supposedly. Um, <laughs> another. It, it, very, very important to talk about the kinds of people who should be looking for cheaper Chinese unbranded dive lights. I'm not talking about the people that might be exploring new cave sections. I'm not talking about the people who go into friggin Australia, go a mile down a line or, or mile down nothing. Um, for people who are getting into caverns and, and probably caves and dipping their toes into that, who don't want to spend 1200 or 1500 or whatnot on an underwater light dude light or a uh, light monkey light um, This is what I'm talking about. So in short I mentioned those two brands those two brands are from my knowledge the only actual dive lights that are made and manufactured in the US that are of good quality that cavers and, and, and scuba divers really like um, Could be wrong. There's probably more but those are the major two from what I know everything else is Manufactured in China, shipped over, bajillion percent markup. It is what it is. So, back to this light. $30 light, 418650s. This guy will have about a two hour burn time. It's very bright. Um, and it works pretty well. Um, so, what I did was I took a Goodman handle, same AliExpress Chinese website, for about 10 or 12 or whatever dollars, attached it to this light using a little bit of hardware from my local hardware store. Let's see if you can see that. I have a flathead, um, flathead 
machine screw here. Got to make sure that's um, stainless steel, obviously, along with the washers and the lock washers and whatnot. But um, works out incredibly well. I use a bit of Loctite in there with a little bit of handiwork and a drill. Um, this is all aluminum, by the way. I don't think there's any bit of this that is steel. So it's very easily machinable with like a drill driver. Very, very simple. Um, so you can just do that this at home. Um, another thing I've done is I've drilled a little hole right here to attach, attach a bolt snap. Might be looking at this and be like, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill yourself. That aside, <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a personal choice. I can't recommend using a what's known as a butterfly snap bolt. It is uh, known to just suck things in and get locked in. So don't do that unless you really want to. I am not uh, advocating this use. It's just a me thing. Um, but yeah, you can uh, cut holes in this. Um, one thing I would suggest if you're going to tie it like this with cave line is to round the edges using a um, using another um, drill bit. So because I've had cave line that would literally just break apart because of the sharp edges. So um, yeah, that's about it as, as far as this light goes. Um, one thing you'll see in cheap Chinese lights, and I don't think it's a major issue and definitely not worth the added cost of going to a branded light. Um, one of the things I've seen in Chinese, that's very common in Chinese um, flashlights, is that they don't have exactly a protective circuit to protect the battery. So if I held this on and left it on for four or five hours, it would continue to drain the batteries and very likely damage them. So. When you've got something like this, be careful about that. Keep that in mind. It is what it is. Um, it's a it's the cost of saving sixty or whatever percent on something unbranded. Um, another speaking of batteries, speaking of batteries, I mentioned this thing has four eighteen six fifties. If you buy a flashlight through AliExpress or some Chinese website. I highly suggest never get the batteries that come with the flashlight. There's usually a package with or without batteries, with or without a charger. I suggest getting the flashlight alone and buying the batteries and or charger separately. Um, it might cost a little bit more in the short term, but you'll get better results. So these are uh, Litakala 18650s, and from what I've read and researched, these are the equivalent, the Chinese equivalent to Panasonic 18650s as far as quality goes. It's Litakala and Panasonic. Everything else is refuse from those factories from what I've seen and heard and read into. So I strongly suggest getting authentic. And again, it's as authentic as you can kind of get the vibe for online, but you, you'll know it when you see it. It'll have like 50,000 orders, excellent reviews. And, and these things go for about about two or three dollars a battery, I think. Last I checked, I think I got like uh, I think I got like twenty of these for like forty something bucks, not including shipping. So go with good quality batteries. Don't skimp on batteries because you'll get burnt. Um, I've yet to see a very high quality battery that comes with a light. And this isn't just AliExpress. I I'll show you. Um, I've got a simple backup torch that I got from a local dive shop and I'm, I'm going to compare these two real quick. So this is Tovatech, a Tovatech 1000 lumen spotlight. I got this out of a uh, dive shop two or three years ago. It takes in one 18650. The battery that came with it was to total crap. I paid a hundred dollars for this. You know, you'd think they'd send a really good quality battery with that considering that's the limiting factor on most of the stuff. Now, um, so Tovatech, if, if you're not familiar, is like literally a Chinese brand, but it is a brand. So I paid $100 for this, and it's okay. It's pretty lean, it's pretty small. I think the quality of the switch is a little bit, little bit better than the other, qual uh, the other switches, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a light for $100. Um, yeah, it is what it is, $100. So that's, I wouldn't say the comparison, but here's the alternative to that that I suggest. So you can pay $100 for that, and that's that. Or this guy cost about, 
I'm not exaggerating, 11 or 12 or $13 AliExpress. So I love these. This is a very simple torch with a magnetic switch. And what I do is I take a little bit of surgical cord or surgical um, rubber tubing and I pull it over this guy. This guy can't turn on permanently. I'm not sure if you can see that light. There we go. Unless I want to break it out. Oh, break it out, turn it on when I'm using it and it works. So this guy will never, never easily turn on in my pocket and never easily burn out. I've had this one do that a lot in, in a lot of situations. In fact, I had that happen on the last dive. I've yet to replace the battery on it. So it is what it is. So that's my suggestion. Um, I've never had issues with these lights. And this light I've had for probably nine months now, and I love it. I'm ordering two more. Uh, you might have noticed the uh, bit of bungee here. If you ever get a hard Goodman grip hand, uh, handle like this, I strongly, 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 strongly recommend taking a little bit of bungee, taking a little bit of shock cord, putting it, tying it somewhere on each side like this, and then wrapping it around your thumb. If you have it wrapped around your thumb, this guy is not going anywhere at all. Like, it's really hard to shake this guy off. Whereas without it, you either have to tighten this up to the point where it's really, really snug and uncomfortable, or, you know, while you, you gotta fiddle around with it while you're like reeling line and stuff. It's, it's inconvenient. So, almost always put the shock cable on. I've never actually seen people do that. Uh, it's a little um, tip I got from somebody over by Tampa, and I think it's a very, very underrated, nobody knows about sort of tip that I love personally. So, yeah, that's that. Um, is there anything else? I can tell you right now, just from looking at this and from use, the first part of this that is going to wear down and break down is this switch right here. Uh, this is a very common switch you'll find in Chinese la uh, flashlights. It's a mechanical switch. It's not that great. Um, it would not surprise me if after another year or two, this thing leaks here or otherwise has issues where you can't or can turn this on or automatically turns on accidentally. Um, so for storage, for using, this is definitely the most fragile part of this batter, of this um, flashlight. Um, I've had one of these fail before, but again, again, when you're talking about a 30 or 50 or whatever dollar light, I mean, like I said, I'm buying two more of these, you know, so um, that's kind of just, you just accept that they might not have a perfect amount of light, of shelf life. And that's another thing, everybody's, um, not everybody, but people who are like, oh, why would you take a Chinese flashlight into a cave? That's you're gonna get yourself killed, or that's terrible. Da, da, da. You trust a Chinese flashlight for your like with your life? <laughs> no, no, I don't. That's why I carry three instead of two, or four, uh, four instead of three. <laughs> that's why I go diving with buddies. Now, if I was a solo diver, uh, if the conditions were a little bit different, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, and again, maybe when I hopefully, hopefully when I get to exploring caves using a deep DP. Going 200 or 300 foot deep, yeah, I'll probably upgrade to an underwater light dude thing because I don't necessarily trust this guy to 200 and 300 feet. I don't necessarily trust this guy to 200 and 300 feet. Those aren't necessarily tested, but, you know, your mileage may vary. But for 95% of divers out there who are like, oh, I'm getting to a cavern and I really don't feel like spending $100 on a, I wouldn't say a shitty torch, but I mean, this thing's not that great. Most of the ones you'll get at a lo local dive shop, not that great and pretty much replaceable by these. So yeah, this one's a touch bit bigger. Put it in your pocket. Buy a pocket. <laughs> You've got the extra money if you're saving it, so buy a pocket. You can buy a 50 or $60 attachable thigh pocket and stuff this in it if you're using a wetsuit. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think personally there are better things to spend your money on than, than perfect branded lights, um, because, you know, 
they're, they're lights. LEDs aren't going to vary from brand to brand. They're all made in the same factories for the most part. For the most part, they're all reasonably, they're all reasonably um, reliable. You know, we're pa we're past the, the the model filament days. You know, LEDs are good. They're pretty solid. Batteries are pretty solid, assuming you get the the, the good ones. So, yeah, that's about it for me today. Um, remember, use a lot of Loctite on this if that's what you're gonna do. Um, I had to crank mm -hmm. the crap out of this to be tight. That way, this this is on one of the one of the sad parts about this is this is on a single point of contact, meaning this thing would easily swivel around if I did not have like really crank it tight. I borderline, I wouldn't say I stripped it, but it would not surprise me if I turn this a little bit more, I'd probably strip it. So you really want this tight. I've never had, um, since I really tightened it and use this as a fulcrum here, um, or use this as a, for leverage. I've never had issues with this untightening. So give it a shot. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. It's a, obviously a very low investment comparatively. And I've not had any major issue with that at all over the past nine months doing caves doing caverns doing open water so yeah i'm gonna turn this thing off and upload it to the youtube